Hey guys, it's me, Karen. Um, I'm hoping to start doing some of my other pieces I had shown some samples of um, this week. And I don't know if you can hear, but it's about mm, 4.45 on Wednesday and it's pouring down rain and it looks like it's nighttime <laughs> outside, but I love the rain. Missy, not so much. And I just don't even give that any energy. I don't coddle her or anything, but uh, obviously in her former life, she was not too happy with that rain and storms and fireworks. But I don't snuggle up with her or anything. I just um, walk around going, yay, isn't it great? We got rain, I'm so happy. So that she starts to associate this with a good thing. And that I, as her protector, I'm not worried. And that I love it. But anyway, okay, first up is this gorgeous Chrysocolla malachite, though it's very small. Oh, there's a little thunder. That's the first. Um, anyway, this little stone is, let's see, about um, really close to um, a half inch wide at its thickest spot. And about three quarters inch long. So that's what we'll be working with. And again, it's a small little piece, um, but I'm experimenting to see because I have to charge, you know, more for sterling silver. So I'm experimenting to see if smaller sterling silver pendants will be a better seller than some of the bigger pieces. And then I'll just put the bigger pieces on Etsy and not even take them to the shop. Or at least temper my expectations, so to speak. But I'm gonna be using this um, cool, I don't know what they call it, like a jagged edge. Um, and I believe this is fine silver as its bezel and then probably a 22 gauge um, piece of sheet metal and um, I want to try I know looking at this right now it almost looks like a sperm <laughs> I'm sorry but it's not going to do I don't think once we're done but um, I am going to use I don't know what gauge this is because a lot of this um, metal was not marked, um, but I'm going to use this cool, like a squiggle um, wire as the bail, just to give it a little bit more interest. I think it'll be different, but it'll be one of a kind. And you, you guys know I like experimenting with stuff, whether it comes out good or not, like the last video with all the stamping. But um, yeah, I'm gonna try that again, but with thicker gauge and see what happens with that. But moving on, because you know, I get bored. So um, this is what it's gonna be next, okay? So I'm gonna do the bezel course, use my trusty little um, card that has double-sided sticky tape on it. Put the stone on that and then you can use that to stabilize the stone. We will form this around the stone. and try to get it tight, but not too, too tight. That looks like a good fit. And then I will mark it with a thin gauge, a uh, thin gauged, with a thin Sharpie.
thin metal shears and give it a little clean cut. And then we'll make sure these edges are nice and level. It doesn't matter if you distort this at this time. We're just checking to see if that will be a good tight fit. And I think it will. So now I will just, how you do that is you kind of push it in under over to create some tension, like counter tension. so that it kind of fits and kind of presses against each other like that. I don't know if you can see that, but I will finagle with that with my pliers. If I can put my hands on them. This is a tedious part and why hard soldering is difficult because it kind of has to be exact. It's not like soft soldering at all. The edges have to match up good. That looks good to me. Okay, on to the soldering of that piece. Let me get set up. I'm using a very small piece of hard solder for this because you always start with hard when you're doing multiple applications. So that means the first application is the bezel strip soldering together. The second application is soldering the bezel strip onto a back plate. The third would be either adding a decorative component or a bale. So that's where the whole um, difference in using hard, medium, and soft come into play. So let me get this set up. So the easiest way to do this is put your little solder chip down, then set your bezel with the seam right on top of the piece of solder. Then we'll flux and start. Then that way, the actual bezel is sitting on top of the solder chip, which then keeps the solder chip in place. And I'm gonna spray some flux, liquid flux. I'm getting low on that. And here we go. And watch for that flash of solder. And we start by heating all around the piece, so you heat this up kind of slowly. And then once it starts to get hot, you can kind of go in more closely to the solder where the seam is. And remember that solder follows heat. is that the um, application of heat either open that bezel strip up to where it's not a good fit, although that looks okay, 
or that there was a little divot in this block where it was sitting and it wouldn't allow that piece of metal to touch the strip. There can be so many little things that affect there, affect why something doesn't work as it should. Get really low on some of that. And I may try um, a different flux. All right, let's try that again. that's what it was. I think the bezel strip wasn't actually touching that solder chip. But we'll try this again. happened there that's exactly what it was that solder chip wasn't actually touching the bezel strip and so it didn't know where to go and as soon as I whoops as soon as I pushed it down slightly it sucked it right up okay into the quenching bowl So you can see it did indeed attach the seam, but I want you to pay close attention. I applied so much heat that it actually started to melt those little teeth right in this section. So there's such a fine, fine balance. You can see that piece sticking up there. Wow. Uh, a fine balance with how much heat, too much heat, where you're pointing your flame, all kinds of things. And just looking at this, I'll bet you I'm gonna have to do a lot of uh, sanding of the bottom of this to get a nice tight connection to the back plate. But first things first, let's see if it fits the stone. <laughs> And like I say, it's not the same shape anymore as um, when we originally measured it, but that's okay because this can be easily formed over your stone. And you can see it fits with even a little bit of play. So that should be easy to get the stone in once it's on the back plate, as long as we don't have any more distortion. Follow me. I'll show you that again. So once it's on that back plate, there's only one way to put the stone in, unless that's an open back bezel where you punch a hole through the back plate. So that's why you put that um, dental floss or whatever you want to use, something that's sturdy and won't tear easily because you have to go drop it in from the top and if it doesn't fit what are you going to do you'd have to try and pry it out and damage your stone but if you have that floss in there you just pull on either side of the floss and it pops that out because the back is no longer available okay gotta go i'll be back so guys if i can show you See how you can see light underneath that bezel? That can't be right there. Well, it's in several places. Solder won't flow, flow there. Solder will not adhere to that. So that's the purpose of filing the bottom of the bezels to try and make them flat and to connect. And sometimes it's, it doesn't even help. 
because you can't push it down like this. Now that's when I get into some trouble because I try to use tweezers and stuff to help me uh, hold that bezel down, but sometimes that doesn't work either. But it's just all that stuff. And some people get it first time and it's no breeze for them, but this is the hardest part of the attachment of the bezel to the back plate for me because boy you can really see that light there and that will not adhere that will not solder and i'm even holding it down and there did you see that little bit of light there that is that's even too much light <laughs> it's crazy. So again, I think because all this stuff is so difficult is why it's so rewarding when you do accomplish something because it's really, really hard, guys. I, I, if you've never done it before, you should try it once or twice. You will understand. So I use the wet dry paper, put a little bit of water on it. Again, you gotta try and hold this good and do circular eight and try and get the bezel, the back of the bezel or the bottom of the bezel as flat as it can be. And sometimes what's not flat could be the metal, isn't? Because once you stamp it, sometimes it wonks it out, right? So yeah, there's all kinds of things. It, there's not ever usually one reason why something doesn't work. I was just trying to help a viewer the last day or two with some problems uh, she was having. And I think I sent her five different questions to just to begin with. Like, is this happening? Is that happening? Are you doing this? Are you using this? What are you trying to do? Send me a picture. You know, because it's, it's not... It's not an easy fix. And it's much harder when you're not there in person to be able to physically show them or even physically see what they're doing correct or not so correctly. And I'm far from a teacher, guys. Let me make that clear. I've made it very well known that I am a complete newbie. I'm gonna try and show you. This is after the filing. And I'm actually really happy with the results. So it looks like a pretty tight connection there. So I'm gonna pop these two things in the pickle pot to get them nice and clean. And then I'll get set up for uh, the soldering. So I've got this set up on the titanium trivet. Um, I'm gonna use medium solder chips that's cut out of sheet. Um, I'm gonna put the aqua flux on the piece and then kind of burn that off. Put probably four little pieces of solder strategically around the bezel and then fire it up and try to get this melted pretty quickly, okay? So I just wanna let you know what I was fixing to do so I don't have to talk and hopefully we can um, get it handled pretty quickly. And yes, it's on the trivet so I can try and heat most of it from underneath to avoid uh, melting any of that teeth decoration off of there like I started to do just um, joining the actual bezel wire so yeah again here's that fine balance so here we go See the flux is getting burned off when it turns white like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply the solder around the inside of the bezel. 
So I'm not sure that you can see where the little pieces are. Here's one, here's one down here, here's one over here, and one up here. And they're tiny. And you do wanna use as little solder as possible because it's not the amount of solder that you use. It's about the connection between the two pieces that you're joining. And then these pieces ideally should be touching both surfaces. So I want that little solder chip to touch the bezel wire and the back plate so that I'm already setting that solder up to successfully go where I want it to go. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> so let me get this set back up a little further away so that hopefully I can film it good and stay safe. Let's see. That should work. You might be able to see the solder flash over there. And I just refilled my um, butane torch because you do go through a lot of fuel. And if you feel like you need more, you probably do. Or if you notice your flame isn't quite as hot as it was last time, then that's probably a factor as well. So I'm again heating from underneath. Trying not to burn anything or melt what I don't want with anything but the solder bits. There went one. And it comes to one around this side. And I think we're good. Let's check. Let's back away from that hot surface and evaluate. And it looks like it melted or soldered. A lot of times, as I've mentioned before, though, that it's not sometimes until after I get it out of the pickle that I know for sure, but I'm almost 100% confident that this soldered all the way around. Oh my gosh, I'll be so happy, which means I think I might be actually getting a little bit better. So let me go pop it in the pickle pot. Fingers crossed, you guys. It's just about as perfect as probably I've ever gotten a bezel before. <laughs> so yay, it's so exciting to actually see progress. Oh my gosh. Okay, so now I'm going to work on doing a bail. And I was actually considering the possibility of doing maybe a little rope wire design around the outside, but that'd be a whole nother thing. So maybe I won't do it on this one. Let me think about it and play with it a little bit. But yay! And you can see like the line from where the solder flowed on the inside and the outside but sometimes that's not real clear until after you've got it pickled you know 
So I'm thrilled with this. Okay, I'll be back. So you guys, I'm thinking I want to try it. It's like I'm feeling brave. <laughs> and maybe, maybe that's the wrong answer, but what the heck, I'm here to learn. This is a twisted wire. I believe it's uh, 18 gauge. Um, where's the package? I think it's 18 gauge. This was some metal that a jewelry friend of mine who I took a bunch of old silver jewelry and whatnot, he melted a bunch of stuff, a bunch of it down and then made me some twisted wire, some square wire, even melted some 10 karat gold jewelry down and made a little bitty <laughs> bit of gold wire when I get really confident that I can use it for the little accents, you know, make the beads. Anyway, I think I'm gonna get brave. Now I'm gonna measure this to try and get this done and then I'll, I'll connect it and then I'll try to solder it. But I wanna start with, um, oops, a really nice flat piece. I don't know how these people that film this stuff get so up close. Well, the shaking doesn't help my hands, but I want this to be flat, right? Just like any other connection, just like the, the bezel wire. It has to be flat when I connect this. So I'm just going to measure this around here and try not and bump it. I want the seam to be on the opposite side of the original seam of the bezel because I don't want it accidentally coming open. Plus, I will be using um, easy solder for this. Oops. Well, you follow me, right? I'm gonna measure it around here, just like I would a bezel wire, cut it off, make sure the ends are flush of this wire, and then sit it down over here before I try to, I'll, I'll show you the next step. But let me just get this measured out. And I actually think I got it measured correctly. That's one. Two, I think I got the ends pretty flush, so that's good. Now I'm going to try and solder this closed, and then I'll have to do like I did with the bezel cup and file and try and get one side of this really flat so that it'll lay flat and accept the solder when I try to solder it to the back plate. So I'm gonna first attempt to get a little piece of solder to connect this join. So I'm using another piece of medium solder and going to try and do it the same way. Put the seam right on that piece of solder. I'm going to put some flux on there and this I think would be a delicate situation I've only tried to do this one other time so I'm going to heat all around it kind of staying far away <laughs> until it gets good and hot and then I hope to kind of at the perfect point zoom in on that joint area and hope that the solder sucks up in there. Seems like it's hot enough and I'm not sure why it's not happening. Seems like it should be happening. I'm going to switch hands and try that thing again. Oh, 
I don't know if that's for sure. There it went, I think. Let me do the clinch and then we'll check it out. Yay, it's not pulling apart. Yay, it's soldered. Okay, awesome. Now I'm going to go back to that other step where I file. I have to file one side of that down, but let me make sure it fits around the bezel first. Yay, and it fits around the bezel pretty snugly, so that's always a good thing. So now I'm going to take this off and file down the back of it so it will have a tight join, right? Because remember, the solder will not flow if the two pieces are this close or not this close. They have to be really close, like no light between them. That's absolutely a key. A little bit of water. Pick a side, any side. And file, sand rather. Might need a new piece of sandpaper, but we'll see. Because I'm trying to get that little piece kind of flat on the side that's going to touch the back plate. And like I said, I've only done this one other time. So I'm not great at it. some more and you can always stop and look because let's see if I can show you you can see the flat edges right it's flat right there it's flat over here there's several spots that's flat but there's more that's not flat than is flat so I want to fix that okay I'm going to continue this and then get set up for the soldering part and I got it um, sanded down, pickled, and now I'm gonna get it set up to try and get it soldered. It looks like it's a pretty good um, connection. So hopefully this'll go pretty well. Okay, so let me get set up. Okay guys, I'm all set up. I'm gonna be using easy solder for this because um, I don't want to risk opening the bezel up or loosening uh, the bezel from the back plate. You following me with that theory of why you use different melting points? Okay, so I strategically placed some little chips down in between that twisted wire, like in between the bezel and the twisted wire so I'm hoping that it'll go and again I'm heating from uh, below We've had pretty good luck so far so I'm hoping for a good result
unfortunately having a hard time seeing the solder flow, so I'm going to stop and evaluate. I know I saw a couple of chips melt, but I'm not sure about this piece up here. Let's put it in the quenching bowl and evaluate because I don't want to melt what I've done already. That would really suck, but not uncommon. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's see. I think. I think it did. I think it worked. Oh my gosh, you guys are bringing me good luck. Okay, I'm gonna um, put this in the pickle pot and evaluate it. Okay, you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and um, cut off the excess here and do some filing and prepare to put the bail on. Okay. Well, before I moved on, putting that cute little squiggle bail on here, I wanted to make sure that this stone fit. And yay, I even have a little bit of play. I think it'll be okay. It's not uh, significant. I'd rather have a little bit too much than not enough. But okay, so now I did that initial stuff. I'm gonna polish it or sand it a little bit more and then put that, uh, get set up for the, putting that bail on. Okay, I got the piece all set up. I got the flux on it. I'm gonna burn that off and then go right in and put a piece, uh, one little piece of easy solder on there and go right back to soldering and hopefully get it done in the first try. Here we go. piece is hot and I've got to try and set it back up. I was hoping I might not need any pliers but um, I think I might. Let's try it again. Okay let's try this again. Yay, it worked. Yay. All right, into the pickle pot and then a little bit more polishing up. And um, I'm going to put some patina around this rope for a little depth and then we'll set the stone. Okay guys, this is after I actually didn't use patina. I just dropped some acrylic paint since it was real well recessed. But look at that shine, wow. And I already did um, 
the Fabuluster. I called it Fabuloso the other day. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway, here we go. We're going to set this baby. And I'm really excited about it. I already checked the fit, so I know it fits perfectly. Woohoo! There we go. I'm gonna hopefully not have to worry about scratching this. I'm gonna do that side. I'm gonna do the point. And I'm going to do the sides and the other side. And I'll be back, guys. Oh my gosh, you guys. I am absolutely enamored with the final results of this. Holy moly. I can't tell you how proud I am of this piece. It for sure has to be paired with a really nice sterling silver chain. And I'm definitely keeping this for a while. It's gorgeous. Oh my gosh. The only thing I will change about this design in the future is I will go with a heavier gauge um, bale. It has a little bit of give, so I would make it to where, you know, it won't budge next time. But isn't it gorgeous? I'm so proud of this. So yay, I feel better. I feel like I'm definitely starting to make some progress now, but man. It's so, so pretty. And here I was trying to make a less expensive pendant. <laughs> but no, with this heavy chain, geez, I don't know. I, I'm thinking a couple hundred dollars for sure. So it won't be going anywhere. Not unless somebody wants to pay that price. But I'm so happy with the the rope edge and I love this um, bezel and I really like the design of this um, bale it just gives it a little cool interest okay guys thanks so much for hanging out with me while I learn I really enjoy sharing this stuff with you guys and getting your input and feedback and whatnot so there it is a gorgeous chrysocolla malachite in all sterling silver wow okay on to the next project i wonder what i'll come up with next thanks guys so much i appreciate you